party moving. Um, most of you know my name, but for those of, the, you, those of you that do not, my name is Sean McCoy. I am a board member on the Missoula um, Farmers Market Board, as well as a vendor, um, even though I'm not there all year these days. Um, first important note is this meeting is being recorded by Missoula County Access Television, MCAT, as part of the Media Assistant Grant donated to the Missoula Farmers Market by MCAT. So thank you very much for MCAT being here and broadcasting this to anybody that can't show up or anybody that's curious about it later. Um, again, my name is Sean McCoy. If you guys have questions, holler out. Um, feel free to just uh, raise your hand and let me know. Otherwise, we'll just kind of plug through the agenda and um, get to silent news and what most of y'all are here to do. A lot of you are old faces and this is kind of uh, same old, same old for many of you. So let me start by introducing our board of directors that is here. So we have Meredith and Nancy, I had it, I had it, and Pam. Is it too early, Aaron? I forgot, are we? Erin is applying for the board. We have to go through the process. So she's an applicant for the board. Uh, those are our board of directors currently. Um, you know, you can always reach out to them. Many of you, I'm sure, uh, remember Meredith as our market manager or Nancy from years back, um, owner operator of Taco Sano. Um, so if you guys need to talk to any board members at any time, please reach out to us if you see us at market or need anything, we're happy to be there to assist you when we can. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce our previous market manager, Aaron, who many of you may know, who's going to introduce our new market manager. Um, hello, my name is Aaron Smith. Um, I've managed, assisted, and managed the market the last three years. Um, and I am moving away to North Carolina, so um, I'll be moving in June, and so we have just hired two new co-managers that I have the pleasure of introducing to you all that you'll be working with in different capacities this season, um, Tammy Hubbard and Katie Collins. Yeah, you can if you want to. Well, I'm Tammy, and um, I'm very excited to get the market started and start working with y'all. Uh, I, in pre my previous uh, couple of years, previously a couple of years ago, I was the Clark Fork market manager, so um, I'm sure there'll be lots of familiar faces. Um, but, and I also work right across the street at Pier West uh, Real Estate, and I'm just excited to be here and happy to meet y'all. <laughs> I'm Katie Collins. Uh, I was a volunteer at the market last year and have evolved into this role. Uh, super excited. I recognize a lot of the faces in here. I'm excited to meet everybody who I don't know. Uh, but I'm really excited to work with Tammy. She brings a really cool perspective uh, with her experience. And I really enjoyed everybody last year that it was a no-brainer to, to accept being a manager this year. So any questions, uh, email us, call us. We're happy to help you. Thank you both for stepping up to that role. It's definitely um, not easy, but a vital role for our farmer's market. Um, okay, so now I am going to run through the folks that will be speaking to you guys this evening. I'll just run through that list, point those folks out for you, and then they'll come up and start speaking. So we have Jen Kane, and if I mispronounce a name, please just correct me on the spot. I am sensitive to that because my name is kind of spelled funny and I've had it mispronounced. Um, so Jen Kane from WIC in the back there. And then we have Ian Finch um, who is with CFAC and Ian is going to be talking about double snap. And then we also have James Keys who is also from CFAC and James is going to be talking about senior coupons. And then uh, Lisa Timms from Prescription Produce was not able to make it tonight in, in, uh, in actuality, so they will not be here this evening. 
Um, and then we have Aaron Austin from Abundant Montana in the back there. And then Sanj Ring from Missoula County Health Department. Sonia. Sonia, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Jen. <clears throat> Hi there, it's nice to be here with all of you. I'm one of the nutritionists with the Missoula WIC program. And I know we've worked with many of you for many years. Um, how many of you guys have been participating with the WIC coupon program before? Some of you? Um, so it's similar, I think Ian's gonna have a nice breakdown for you guys of the different coupon programs. Um, all of our Missoula uh, WIC clients have in the summertime $30 to use for fresh fruits and vegetables for local produce. So if you would like to um, learn how to participate in that program and accept those coupons, it's a very simple process and I'm happy to get you guys enrolled tonight. Um, those of you who have been growers with us in the past and would like to renew, I'm happy to do your annual training for you here tonight. They do also have a little process where you can just take the training home and read through the things if you need to leave early um, and want to just do your renewal that way and then you can mail it in. So if any of you need to do that documentation, I'm happy to do that. Um, I guess I should just back up for those of you who don't know the WIC program. We are a special supplemental nutrition program. We supply food benefits to our families as well as nutrition education and referrals. We're designed to meet the special nutritional needs of people during pregnancy, breastfeeding, and early childhood, so from birth until age five. Um, and we do think we're one of the most effective public health programs in doing that. We're celebrating 50 years this year, and we're happy to be bringing about almost $20,000 to the Missoula County area um, for, the, for the local produce. So, um, we thank all of those of you who have participated with our program. I'm so sorry there's all these steps that you guys have to jump through these hoops to participate. Um, but we're happy to help support the local agriculture and also to be able to provide your beautiful produce to our clients. Um, if any of you guys need a new stamp or a new sign, um, you can tell me about that. I'm happy to get you what you need. And then um, I guess just one other notable thing is that the coupons this year will be blue instead of green. <laughs> so that's the one little change. And it will be paper checks one more year this year. Um, and then uh, next year they are going to be going to the eWIC program. I don't have any further details at this time, but uh, stay tuned for that. So, yes. You said at $30, is that Good, good question. That is um, $30 per client uh, per season. Yeah. So um, a household could be one person, one pregnant person could have that $30. Some of our households have multiple members with eligible clients. Um, so it wouldn't be unusual to have a family come with $90 uh, or more. Typically, you're going to see $30, $60, $90 per, per family. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Any other quick questions? Okay, well, I'll be in the back to do your trainings or any other questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? You good? <laughs> uh, my name is Ian Finch, and I work with the Community Food and Agriculture Coalition here in Missoula, but we are now a statewide organization. Today I'm here to talk about SNAP and Double SNAP at the Farmer's Market, Missoula Farmer's Market here we are vending, but the program probably appears in other farmer's markets as well if you're out in other areas of the state or even in our own community. So this is relevant for any farmer's market where they accept SNAP and Double SNAP at the market information booth. Um, as a, uh, Jen, Jen <laughs> for 10 years, was pointing out um, there are a lot of different food access programs that we're talking about today. The Wake Farmers Market Nutrition Program, SNAP and Double SNAP, senior coupons, and it's kind of hard to remember sometimes what items you can sell when someone is trying to give you one of those either coupon vouchers or tokens. So we do have a little cheat sheet for you all today that has all the different programs listed and then all the different foods that you can basically exchange for those either tokens or coupons. 
So I'll leave these on this front table. You can just pick one up. It's just a great little cheat sheet to have in your market booth. So if you have someone who's maybe selling for you on your behalf at the market, you haven't really had a chance to train up yet on how to accept these things. It's just a simple way to just take a glance at this and say, oh, that is something I can sell to you for that food access program or not. With that being said, um, I'm here for the Double Snap Dollars program today. We are a SNAP matching program. So SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It is the largest federal nutrition program in the United States. And even in Montana alone, SNAP participants spend around $12 million per month wow. in the state. So basically what our goal is, is to capture those sales and bring them to you. That's the overall goal of the Double Snap program. For Double Snap itself, we are now working with around 25 farmers markets across the state of Montana, probably five or six CSAs. So we also work directly with farmers if you want to consider a program just for you at your farmer farm stand. And then we're also working with Albertson store now, which is a little bit different, but we have nine Albertson stores across the state that also accept Double Snap dollars. At the market location for Missoula Farmers Market, uh, this is one of those programs where vendors, unlike the WIC or senior coupon programs, you don't have to do anything to get certified to accept Double Snap or Snap tokens. The market and their good graces does all of that work on the vendor's behalf. So just a big thank you to the market for taking on that burden. They do all of the work to make sure that the token inventories are there, that they're there, that be swiping people's EBT cards, exchanging those funds for tokens, and then telling them on you know, where they can go to accept. So basically all of these programs are geared towards uh, you know, specialty crop growers, fruits, vegetables, um, pulses, legumes, and lentils are now eligible as well for this program. So if you sell fresh, frozen, dry mm -hmm. produce, fruit, legumes, lentils, mm -hmm. or seeds, you can accept double SNAP dollars tokens for those items. Now SNAP is a little bit different. SNAP is for any food. So as long as you're not selling alcohol, um, crafts, jewelry, those kinds of things, anything that someone can take and eat, you can accept that SNAP token. So SNAP is for any food item, double SNAP tokens are just for those produce items, fruits and vegetables. You can also sell bedding plants and seeds with SNAP and double SNAP dollars as well. So if you are bringing some of those to market early in the season, people can redeem their food benefits for plants that produce food as well. And that's on this little cheat sheet. Um, that's about it for SNAP and Double SNAP. Um, if people have any questions, you can come ask me after, or maybe we could just take a couple questions now if anyone has any. Yeah? Yeah. Can you take a SNAP for like hot prepared foods? Thank you. Um, if the food is intended to be consumed at home, you can. If the food is intended to be consumed on site at the market, you cannot. So food trucks, not so much. If say, you know, you have something that is sealed, is ready to go home with someone, you can. But if you're confused about it, ask the market manager, come talk to us. We want to make sure that we're all in compliance. So we would just be interested in what those food items are and we can get better guidance. Um, what I didn't mention is that double snap dollars for participants, we match up to $30 per market. So when a EBT customer comes to the market, they swipe their card, they can get up to $30 or however much they want in those SNAP tokens, and then they can get up to 30 additional dollars in double SNAP. So that turns into a $60 shopping trip for that customer per market, and they can do that every single market, and they can do that at all the markets in town. Yay. So spread the word, you know, people need to maximize these benefits, we have the money, we want people to get food, so there's no reason to not be spending these benefits everywhere they can. Any other questions? Right, I'll just you. add one thing. Yes. Just make sure, and we'll send an email with all this information too, but just make sure you only are taking the proper color tokens because they vary market to market. So our market colors are pink and orange, and we'll send that in an email again and remind you if, if you accidentally turn in one for the Clark Fork market or you know some other random state market, but uh, just a reminder. And that's fine if that happens. You do some little magic with that. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Last program, uh, food access program. 
Um, my name is James Key, as all Lawrence Mass, you can hear me. Um, I coordinate the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, which similar to the WIC Farm Direct program is a statewide federal food benefit program. So we give $48 worth of coupons to folks 60 and up who fall within our income guidelines. Um, it's usually 185% of the federal poverty level, so similar to SNAP and, and the WIC guidelines as well. Um, so we'll give people $48 in coupons to spend at local farmers markets. They can use them at the Missoula Farmers Market, the Clark Fork River Market. Um, we ask that the ones that are issued in Missoula County are kept in Missoula County. Beyond that though, you can bring them between markets. There's no special coupon for each market, kind of uh, opposite what Ian was saying. Um, these coupons are going to be orange this year, so for returning vendors, only accept those orange ones. Um, none of the, the ones from last year, which I can't even remember the color, I think they were purple anyways. Um, they can only be spent on fresh produce, so raw unprocessed fruits and vegetables, and then raw honey. So we operate pretty similarly to the WIC Farm Direct program in our just protocols. We have a separate training, a separate contract, uh, but it's similar, you know, fruits and vegetable based coupons um, and different demographic, obviously. We see what else. You have an individual farmer ID uh, for our program as well. So if you participate in both the WIC program and the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition program, you will have two different numbers. And we just ask that you write your SFMMP number on those SFMMP coupons before you turn them in, just so that we can keep track of, if you can believe it, there's uh, 25,000 coupons in the state and we individually track all of them. So the farmer ID number is a really important part of that. And then like I mentioned earlier, there will be um, a regional code on each coupon. So you will see MS on all of those coupons. And if you can, just please keep those in Missoula County. MS stands for Missoula. Again, just to keep the record keeping tight on those 25,000 coupons. Um, so we have an online vendor training. It takes about 20 minutes and then we have an online contract. We can do everything over the phone or on paper as well. Um, we'll be sending out that training either later tonight or in the morning. Uh, one of those things that I uh, wish I would have been able to do that before talking to you now, but the training is going to go live in the next probably day or so so that folks can start getting that done. Um, if you're a new vendor, we'll need a contract and the training from you. If you're a returning vendor, we just need the training. And then I'll let you know if you need a new contract. Those expire every three years. There's a lot of information. Are there any questions? Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Um, I'm just going to speak on behalf of Prescription Produce. It's another uh, coupon that you might be receiving. And again, we'll send all of this out to you via email so you have it all. But Lisa was not able to be here. These are This is a very small number of coupons, and they're blue. They're dark blue and white. Um, and they only can be exchanged for fresh fruits and vegetables or produce plants. Um, and they're weekly. They're given weekly to maybe like five to ten people max. Um, and so this is just another coupon that you might see. And uh, there's just a handout that the woman gave me to give to you all if you're curious about it. Um, but I just wanted to speak on behalf of that. And then, Meredith, do you mind opening the laptop so Aaron can log on? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All, we're almost through all the talkers. Um, thanks for your attention, everybody. And thanks, Meredith, for your sure. help there. So I'm Erin Austin. Um, I actually don't see that many familiar faces, so this is really exciting to me to get to meet you all this evening. I work for Abundant Montana, um, and maybe you've seen the local food guide around at the market last year or spots around town, a show of hands or a head nod if you've heard of Abundant Montana or the local food guide. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and a lot of you haven't, which is also fabulous, so I'm really excited to share it with you. Thank you. Yep. Yep. And you hold it up for me. <laughs> um, so Abundant Montana, we are an organization committed to building a more resilient and reliable food system in the state for all Montanans. And our goal is to have more Montana food on all Montana plates. Um, so a, a different uh, pitch for you all this evening. I'm really going to talk to you about marketing, and we're here to help you reach more customers. Um, so there's a few ways that we do that, and if you are not yet plugged in, um, I would love to talk to you this evening. There uh, are lots of ways for us to help you raise your profile and get in front of your target customers. The first way, um, if you're not yet familiar, is our online Fine Food and Farms map. So this is 
what we hope um, is one of the most comprehensive maps in the entire state, listing local farmers, ranchers, farmers markets, restaurants that source local food, grocery stores that have local food, uh, breweries, cideries, wineries, etc. We're trying to be um, all inclusive when we're thinking about who we can list on this map and who's sourcing local food. Um, it's totally free to have a listing on this map. So if you're not yet on the map, I'd love to help you get on the map. Uh, I can give you my phone or my card, my phone number, or um, a QR code where you can log in and make an account and make it happen this evening. Just for fun, I'll show you the Missoula Farmers Market listing. Um, and you can see what a listing looks like. I know, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're trying to smart. Um, so, it's just another way for you to get to advertise. We invest a whole heck of a lot of time. We've got a full team of marketing and communications folks on staff that are trying to make our website as searchable as possible. So, it's very common that folks who are smaller vendors or smaller businesses, when somebody goes to Google you, your listing on Abundant Montana might show up first on Google before your own website, say, sometimes. Um, so all kinds of opportunities for you to include contact information, location, photos and logos, a description of who you are, the products you sell, etc. cetera. Um, so if you're not yet, let, yet listed, a plug um, to do that this evening. And the other thing I'll say is every year we put out this free magazine for consumers that's called the Local Food Guide. We print 25,000 copies of these and we have a team that distributes them across the state. The goal of this is to help build consumer demand for local food in Montana. And every single person that's on the Find Food and Farms map is also included in the magazine. So it's really good timing that we're talking this evening because the deadline to be included is the end of March. Um, so if you don't yet have a free listing and you'd like to be in the magazine, definitely hit me up in the next three weeks. Let's get you in here. Um, there are opportunities to um, elevate your marketing with us even more. We do a lot to support businesses in terms of their own, excuse me, I'm gonna go work with us instead. Your own marketing, if you are really trying to figure out Instagram and want a little support, we can help you do that. If you're interested in placing an advertisement in the magazine, there are opportunities to do that as well. If you're looking for, um, new ways to connect with businesses. You want to get into restaurants, say, or um, sell your product in new grocery stores or real retail opportunities, we can support with that as well. So um, I'm very excited to be here. I really appreciate the work that you all do to support our community food system in Montana and the Missoula area. Um, and I'll hang out until the meeting ends. So please come say hi. Okay. And then Thank you so much. Yeah. Great. And I can just, do you want me to just close this, Marina? You can use our Z. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Good color. <laughs> Um, so good evening everyone, my name is Sonia Ring. I am one of the sanitarians for environmental health. I will be one of the, um, one of four members dealing with any of your temporary food service permits or any other food questions you have. Um, I am going to be talking about temporary food service permits and also health uh, guidelines. Um, I want to ensure that we have a safe and successful farmers market season. So if you are planning on serving food or beverages, any sort of unpackaged food or anything that requires refrigeration, um, you will need to get a temporary food service permit um, unless you are operating out of your licensed mobile or you are selling exempted foods under Cottage Food or Montana Local Food Choice Act. Um, to get these temporary food service permits, you will need to submit a application um, to our department. Those applications can be picked up um, on our website, um, in person tonight, or um, at the health department on the second floor. Um, they can be submitted uh, via email, um, in person, or um, mailed in. 
um, to pay for these applications and permits, um, you can, again, over the phone um, or in person or mailed in a check. Um, the application kind of walks you through um, what kind of food you're going to be serving, um, how you'll be transporting it to the market, um, your booth setup, your hand washing station setup. Um, so just um, kind of walk through that. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or call us or come in person to talk about it. Um, and just please submit your applications as soon as possible. Um, and then if you are operating under Cottage Food or Montana Local Food, Montana Local Food Choice Act, ensure that you are following all regulations. If you have questions about um, what you're allowed to serve or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and then kind of the last thing I wanted to talk about was just some health guidelines for this year, just kind of remembering um, since it has been a year since the market. Um, so just ensure that you are wearing gloves for all um, whenever you are handling ready-to-eat items. Um, ensure with your hand washing station that the water is from, the water temperature is between 100 and 120. We just want that warm water. Um, and that you have soap, paper towels, and a bucket below the um, hand washing station to catch all of that gray water so that you can dispose of it correctly. Um, ensure that you have a sanitizer bucket out just to be able to wipe down surfaces as soon as they get dirty or be able to clean surfaces when you guys are setting up. Um, and then the last thing is just um, place a tarp underneath your booth. If you're thinking um, your food is going to be messy, just for an easy cleanup at the end. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, I have uh, lots of documents um, up at the front, so if you have any questions or need anything, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you so Okay, so we're going to transition into some updates about the market. Um, it'll just be some different folks coming up that you're familiar with. Meredith is going to do online, and we'll just work our way through some of the updates. I also wanted to encourage the vendors that are eligible for these programs to sign up. It's money out there to be taken advantage of if it's available to you. Highly encourage that. Um, I also wanted to mention some of you may be wondering where Luann is. I forgot to say that. Um, Luann is out of town and wasn't able to make it. Is that correct? Is that correct? She is, yes. Yeah, um, but she is still on the board. Um, and I forgot to make a quick note about that. So for those of you that are wondering about Luann, she's still involved in the market. She's just not here tonight. Um, so with that, we will run through these updates. And then uh, we'll move on to questions and comments. And then we'll do space items. Go ahead, Meredith, and yeah. you're up next. You want to? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry that we didn't have enough chairs for everybody, but that means that it's a great turnout. So thanks, everybody, for coming. We're going to do some updates. Okay. So this is our website. Many of you might have already been on it. So I'm just going to kind of run you through become a vendor. So here is a lot of really good information about becoming a vendor. So you can click through and we've got some links, some helpful links, and licensing and permitting. So we've got links to the health department, all that good stuff. We've got our fees on here. And then if you want to pay online, let's say you've already registered, you want to pay online, you've been on our uh, convention board site already, but you just click here, and I've got an account, so I'm going to log in. I need to sign my agreement. So some of you might have gotten on to our system and there was no agreement. That is all fixed, and so it is there now. So you can purchase space, you can sign the agreement, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's about it. There will be maps that will be produced from the system. It's very, very useful. And I think that's about all I needed to say about that. But it's nice that if you've registered online, you don't have to fill out a paper application. You're already set. If you've registered in previous years, you're already registered. So. 
That's that. Take it away. All right, and I get to talk about Tuesday market dates. Um, our Saturdays will start May 4th, but we won't start Tuesdays until June 4th. And then they'll run through September 24th, which is probably the last Tuesday in September. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in that, make sure you get signed up for Tuesdays. All right, my turn. Um, so in October, when we're just back down to the Saturday market, um, some of you might know this, some of this might be new information, uh, we changed the start time back one hour. So instead of eight, it becomes nine for the month of October. That's just so we have a chance for daylight before your customers start showing up. So something to remember. And one thing we're going to change as well is the last two Saturdays of October, we are going to condense the market down to just Alder Street. So something to keep in mind if you are a vendor on the other side of the train on Saturdays, we're going to move you over. And that's just because historically the market gets a little bit smaller those last two. So we want to put you guys close together and give our customers a, a, a better experience. I should have mentioned Tuesdays is from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So make sure you show up about 4 to get set up on Tuesdays. Um, we will have a photographer at the market. Um, John, I don't know if he's here. No, oh, there he is. Hi. So if you're, let us know if you don't want to be photographed and, um, you know, for our website or for advertising, and we'll make sure that John puts something in front of your face. Uh, yeah. Uh, parking. So as most of you know, the parking lot right next to Alder uh, is largely the peak fitness parking lot. There is a makeshift divider that gives us use of half of that parking lot off of Higgins for our customers. So just a reminder about that. Uh, you can use any side of that parking lot for unloading, uh, loading, but we do ask that you move. Um, for peak, because one, they don't want us there and we have to put a sign out turning away customers, but two, our side of the parking lot we do want to leave free for your customers. So uh, if you guys do need a special accommodation though, just let us know, reach out to either Tammy or myself and we'll get you taken care of. Oh, I'm next. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing is about our tokens. So that's Basically, anything that these nice individuals just talked about, the SNAP, the prescription produce, the senior coupons. Uh, the other thing, too, are those cash tokens. Those of you who are familiar with this, um, they're those gray ones that are in $5 increments, that, that makeshift ATM system that we have for folks that can swipe their credit or debit cards and get cash tokens to spend. So you guys will accumulate those, and you'll come to us. And then we'll count them out and we'll write you a check for that amount to deposit. So a couple uh, things regarding that. Um, first one being is it's one check per market. We ask that you bring that to us at least 30 minutes before the end of the market. Uh, anything after that, just wait till the next one. We'll get you taken care of. Uh, the next thing, too, is at the end of the season, when you get your last one, uh, the board's asking that you would cash that check before the 15th of December. That just gives us the ability to go into the new year and close out our books. So obviously you want the money too. So uh, I will send this all as we approach the end of the season. It hasn't even started yet, so I don't necessarily expect you guys to remember all of this. Um, and then last se uh, markets of the season, both Tuesdays and Saturdays, uh, we will ask you guys to respect those cutoff times. If you do happen to want to go to the very end of those markets to accumulate as much as those tokens as you want, we'll mail you a check at, at the end, so you'll get your money. I think that's it from us. Okay, thanks. All right, oh, and we didn't mention this, but so we have our two co-managers and we've split their duties into two. So Tammy is our communications manager and Katie is our operations manager. So if you have something communications related, talk to Tammy. If it's more operations, then it's Katie. So. And we're, we're not even sure the difference. We're working so on it. <laughs> just come to either one it's of us new. and we'll figure it out. We're rolling yeah. ourselves into one person for the most part. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just to kind of divide those duties. Yeah. Okay, and so we do have an update to our regulations, which is kind of exciting. But before we go into that, I want to mention that 
We are looking for more vendors all the time, more produce vendors. Uh, if you know any backyard gardeners, we would love to have them. You don't have to purchase a full season space. So, you know, if you know anybody who has a bunch of zucchini in July or something, they can purchase just one space or they can get a five pack or whatever, and they can be part of our market. And because the, the farmer's market started pretty much as a backyard gardener's market. So we just want to encourage as many people as possible to get involved. But moving on uh, to our new regulations. Oh, yes. Sorry, now I'm going back to the application. So, <laughs> sorry about that. I've got it notes here. So, if you are applying online, please make sure to list out everything that you're wanting to sell, uh, especially if you're part of this new category, which is non food slash agricultural products. So, I'm pretty much going to read the new regulations. It's also posted on our website here. So, We've decided, the Board of Directors has decided to welcome a limited number of crafters and artisans. Uh, this year we're limiting these vendors to 15% of the total number of vendors. We don't want to change the whole character of the market. Also, if you're selling something like baked goods or produce and you want to bring in some of these kinds of products, you're welcome to do so. So our first category is agricultural crafts. So they must be handmade predominantly of material grown or gathered by the vendor in Western Montana, such that the agricultural material is the focus of the craft product. Items may, be, may include, but are not limited to, wool and wool products, body care products, wreaths, dried floral arrangements, potpourri, gourd birdhouses, and beeswax candles. Then our other category is products and services that support the use of items purchased at the market or promote gardening and sustainable living practices. Examples include knife sharpening or composting services, wooden bowls and utensils, and ceramic dinnerware. And just to let you all know, the market co-managers have the discretion to immediately remove any item that is not within these guidelines, and the board of directors will review this and make a decision within 30 days of that happening. So, that's our new regulations. I have a question. Yes. Might as well just get it out now. Do it, yeah. Um, I just started making soap from our pig fat. Yes. So tallow and lard. Okay. So yes, so yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> Thank any you. other questions yeah. about the new regulations or updates? Okay, love it. Thanks. Okay, so the last update for y'all is we are putting out a request for recipes that anybody may have that they make from their own products. So if you have a dish that you make with eggplant or I don't know what, but anything that you may create from your farm or garden or apples or whatever it is that you do, um, and you want to share that recipe, we would be happy to take those recipes in. And we are going to, were they going to go to the website? Is that, I forgot. Yeah, website, it. social media. We're going to try and kind of create some type of way to send those out to folks to utilize and also hopefully direct folks maybe to your booth or at least to the farmer's market as kind of a, you know, technique of getting interest in the market as well as, um, in all of our products. And that, I believe, is the last update, um, which brings us to questions and comments. Does anybody have anything they need answered overall? Nothing? All right. Oh, no, there's one in the back. Oh, one in the back. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. So I'm a small home bakery, and he makes 3D prints of models that are really hard to find. I'm just asking if that's all right. Um, so the baked goods, yes. for sure. Printed 3D models, my suspicion is probably not, but we might have to mull that over. I think we need more information about about it to make a decision. Uh, jewelry, decor, just things that you normally wouldn't find in a store, not inappropriate or anything, fantasy related things that peak interest. What is what do you what does the 3D printer make them out of? Is it just like uh, biodegradable plastic and resins? 
Okay. Everything. It's not handcrafted, so. Partially. Hmm. It's a little bizarre. So he prints with these, they're basically plant made uh, plastics that you can get. I wouldn't say plastic, I'm not entirely 100 percent sure. But I also make things out of, you, you guys ever seen a chocolate press? Uh, it's an edible sweetie maker that uses chocolate. And so I make like pokeballs, nerd stuff out of chocolate. I wouldn't say it's handmade, but it is made. Okay, so my gut feeling is, is that probably on jewelry and things like that would probably be no. But my suggestion would be is to maybe create like something that you can give to us, breaking down how it's how it's made and what you're mating, making, and that will give us an opportunity to yeah, evaluate I that a little closer. Cupcakes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. I'm eating it right now. It's delicious. Um, there's a winter market, so you, um, the market masters can go look at it there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.